In this video, we'll cover the best spots to loot in Rattai. I've split it up into three sections, outside Rattai, Perkstein Castle, and inside Rattai. I've added timestamps and a link to the Notion database in the description. Let's get started. But we're going to cover Rattai, everything on the outside of the city. There's actually only three chests or three locations worth checking. So we are going to start in your spawn area right when you finish the main quest line. It spits you out. You're going to exit the building and make a left. There's going to be a very hard lock here. You got to be careful because the miller will rotate around here sometimes and it kind of relaxes right here. So don't get caught doing that. Just wait for him to rotate back. And then once you open this door, there is a, another very hard lock right here. And we've got a thousand groschen, some lock picks, the rule of St. Nicholas, which is pickpocketing skill book, and then treasure map 12. The next building we're going to go to is the bathhouse. So we're going to keep the mountain to our left hand side and we're going to proceed this way. So again, just keep the mountain on your left hand side and this two story building right here, the first one you run into. Now, most of these doors have locks like this one's easy. I think most of these downstairs ones all have locks to get in. This also is very easy. We're going to go straight past the little kitchen area, open the very easy lock. And then back here, there is a very hard lock right here. Get a little privacy here. So very hard. All the potions, you get 100 groschen and then marathon a skill book. And like I said, all the usual potions that you get in these. There are a few more chests. If you go upstairs, there's more groschen. I think the total here is like 180 or something like right here, another 29, this other one by the of the bed has another 25 and then there's a few in here now the final one we're going to go to is all the way at the top of the hill so we have to go through ratai and then we're going to end up at the top of the hill right where you a little bit past where you do training with bernard right up here this is the inn and we're going to start down here on the bottom probably going to want to crouch hopefully you have some decent stealth skill because these people will spot you it's a very hard lock and then this one, I highly recommend closing because one of the barmaids will rotate over here and she might spot you. The chest on the right has mostly consumables. The one all the way in the back, same thing, consumables. And the one on the left is the one that has the money. So this one has 150 groschen and more consumables. So tons of savior schnapps if you need it. There's one more if you want to get some equipment is to go upstairs where the guests are staying. And it's going to be the upstairs, the one all the way in the end. We're going to again crouch because these people will spot you. It's an easy lock, so not too hard to get in here. The one on the right doesn't have anything good in it. It's the one on the left. Again, it's an easy chest. So if you don't have a whole lot of lock picking skill, this is definitely a good spot to start with. The Grand Bassinet for 1300 groschen. I also, I didn't mark most of the clothing, but tight black hose is really good for keeping your stealth, your noise down, your visibility and all that. So this could be good for that as well. The outside of Rattai can be great for leveling lock picking with 69 locks being very easy or easy. The loot isn't bad, over 1500 groschen, mostly at two locations, but there's little to no armor and weapons out here. Now we're going to head into Perkstein Castle, so if you come in here from the southwest gate, you're going to come through here, and on the right is Perkstein Castle. We're going to start on the bottom level first, don't mind these gentlemen. No! We're going to start down here, the very first door on your right is very hard, but this is where the armory is. And then there's going to be two very hard chests. Both have a lot of equipment in it, but there's also a bunch of stuff on the wall that's free to take if you can get it. The one thing you have to worry about this room is if you get in, you have to be wary of guards walking in, opening the door. They'll throw something in the chest and then they'll walk back out. But if you are here trying to pick stuff, you are definitely going to get caught. So what I recommend for this one, come in very quickly, pick both of these chests, take everything out of them and then sort through it here while you're fully overburdened and just drop the stuff that you can't use. But as you can tell, there's a huge amount of very, very expensive stuff here. So there's a stalwart, fear not, duelist, piercer, and then from there on, it's just lower tier stuff. But those are the expensive ones. And then in terms of armor, dyed Milanese, brigandine, 2.7k. There's a bunch of stuff well above 500. Definitely worth looking at. There's also some stuff in these barrels. Like you'll notice there's not very high value things, but if you're looking for something that maybe has lower stats, these have lower stats in here, six and seven. Let's keep moving. So we're going to go down the hall. The second door on your right is going to be very hard as well. There's nothing in here, but if you need the lock picking XP, you can do that one. If you make a left, there's an easy chest. There's a couple pieces of clothing that are worth a little something. And then straight at the end of the hallway, there's two more chests in here. An easy with, again, some decent clothing in here worth a little bit of money. And then a hard at the end of the hall. This one doesn't usually have anything good in it. And that's it for the ground floor. Let's go move up to the second floor. So we're going to start here on the very right. Again, this is a very hard lock, the first door on the right. And you're going to see a very easy couple things in here that are worth money in terms of clothing. We're going to go down to the second door. This one has a hard chest and then just some silverware. 
The door on the left has Feyfar on it, so you have to be careful with this. So I would probably duck down and then get the easy chest. There's some Groshen and a bunch of books. The other easy chest has some expensive clothing, 1100 on the boots and then almost 500 on the pants and then a lockpick. And then you can go straight ahead. There's not really much in here. It's a kitchen and then there's one easy chest just with some silverware. Probably not worth your time though. There are some chests here in the third floor. I don't really recommend it. It's not worth your time. There's not a whole lot. I would probably spend my time coming up here into this guard tower. So if you go across from the third floor building, you walk all the way along the edge of the wall, there's a spot where you can get up the circular tower. This goes up pretty high. Again, this is one of those high traffic areas. You have to be careful. Probably go here at night rather than during the day. There's a few chests here. The very first one you'll see is an easy one and there's some armor in here. So you got a hat, decorated Bavarian halberd, and a short light brigandine. So decent armor in here. And it's an easy chest, so if you don't have high lock picking skill, this might be a good spot to go. There's some weapons along the wall that you can steal as well, but really the chests are mostly what we're interested in here. Again, some decent stuff, riveted von braces for almost 500. And then we can go up one more. This is the final level. There's some bows in the wall, ash hunting bow and a hazel hunting bow. There is a chest here that's not locked. This one's mostly for nighttime when people are sleeping. Looks like they left some male chouses and decorated Bavarian halberd. So again, decent stuff up here. Just be careful because it is very easy to get caught when you're coming up here. Perkstone Castle isn't great for lockpicking XP or raw Groshen, but it's an amazing spot to find weapons and armor. The ground floor of the castle has all the weapons and some armor, while the guard tower mostly has armor. Because of the number of guards present, I recommend coming at nighttime. So once you leave Perkstein's castle, you're going to want to go through the homeless encampment and make a left at the first opportunity. The first shop you're going to come across is the swordsmith. We're not going to go in the main shop. We're going to go in the back door. Giggity, giggity, giggity goo. And we're going to make a quick left. It's a hard lock. And then in here, you're going to see a bunch of very hard chests. I recommend closing this door. If anybody spots you, I would just wait a second just to see if anybody comes in. If nobody comes, then you start picking. So there's three very hard locks. There's a razor and a stalwart and a heavy battle axe and an axe in this one. Everything else is below 500. Again, all this stuff is in the database. It's much easier just to look on there to see what it is than look at the video. But just be aware, this one's got the good stuff. This middle one sucks. And the one on the right has the Groshen. So 1500 Groshen here. There are a few chests upstairs. Most of them aren't really worth checking. However, the one at the top of the staircase does have a quest item, a piece of the Queen Sheba sword. Next, we're moving directly next to it, which is the armor smith. So you can see if you go further into the little square, you see the armor smith. We're not going to go through the front door. We're going to go in the back door. So you go on the left side of it. You can go all the way to the back alley, go all the way up the stairs from the back. We're going to open this door and make a quick right. And the door straight ahead is where you want to go. There are plenty of chests in here. There's a little bit of loot. There's a little bit of clothing in there. Probably, again, not worth your time. Most of the loot is going to be straight ahead. I recommend closing the door because if anybody walks by, you're going to get caught. There are four very hard chests in here and there's a ton of cash and a ton of armor here. So again, we're going to go through this, but I would mostly look at the database to see if what it is that you need. But we got a Saxon plate pauldron, Raiders Kurdias, a bunch of things that are well worth over 500. So this is probably one of the best ones in the game. The one along the back wall, this has a bunch of the very expensive stuff. So the dyed Milanese Brigadine for 2.7k, the pauldrons for 2.1k, the Grand Bassinet, really Really, really good stuff here. Even got some shields and Hercules in his diet and some armorer's kits. And then there's two more along this other wall. So we'll do the upright one first. A bunch of 1k or higher stuff. A few things below that. Still no money. The money is in the last one. This one has 2,000 Groshen. I believe that's the highest in the game. So very, very good spot to hit if you're looking for just straight cash. Also has a lot of good stuff here. I would say between all these four chests and the cash on hand. So you're looking at two grand in cash and probably 40 to 50,000 of Groshen worth of high-end stuff. And if you sell everything, maybe 60 or 70k. I would probably leave the little stuff and just at least get the big stuff. You can come in here and start looting some of these. This is where people sleep, so you do have to be careful. Sometimes there's guards. There's a few chests in here with a little bit of Groshen here and there. But again, you're going to be getting 2,000 if you go in the other rooms. So we're going to go back to the square. Look this way. You're at the rat house. We're going to go underneath. Before you get to the rat house, on the left-hand side is the tailor. So we're going to come in here. If it's closed, it'll be a very hard lock. If it's open because they're during business hours... <laughs> So there's going to be two people in here and a guard. If you try and go into their back room, it's usually not locked during the day. And at nighttime, when you have to break in, it will be locked. So nighttime, you won't have any issues. If it's during the day, what I recommend doing is opening the door, stepping in here to bait him in, and then step back out. He'll come following you in. 
And then when he's in here, close the door and knock him out. And then you can loot everything. The actual shopkeepers will leave you alone. It's the shop guard that'll stay on your butt. So there's a very hard lock. We got some decent clothing here and there's some tailor kits and whatnot. The second one along the wall is usually where the money is. This one's got 1000 groschen, so still pretty good. More clothing. So any of the high end clothing that you need will be in here. And then there's one more very hard on the floor, a thousand dollar hat, and then a bunch of decent clothing. And let's go ahead and exit. We're going to go to one more shop here before we go further up. And it is going to be the apothecary here. I would go around the back. So if you go towards the church, make a left. There's an entrance in the back that you can go to. We'll open up the door and it's the first door on your left. It is a hard lock pick, but nobody comes back here. So you shouldn't have any issues with people bothering you. Very hard locks. Just as I was saying that, somebody came in. <laughs> The first chest is the one that has a bunch of recipes, some savior schnapps, and a skill book. The second one, also very hard, this has the groschen. It's only 250, but there are a ton of recipes in here, so worth well more than the 250 that you can take if you're doing any kind of crafting. There are more things in there, like there's a chest on the floor right here that you can loot. Not really a whole lot in there. There's quite a few things up here as well. I don't think it's worth your time unless you're doing it at nighttime and you have high stealth. Kind of high risk and low reward, I would mostly stick to the one in the back. We're going to leave the apothecary. We're going to go straight up the hill and you're going to keep going up the hill. And when you get to this little archway, we're going to make a left. And then it's the first building right here. During the daytime, Bertrand or whatever his name is, the huntsman, he will be outside. And if you try and go into his house right here, he will actually follow you in. If you have good stealth, you should be able to do it without him spotting you. If you don't have good stealth, you might need to come back at nighttime. Or maybe try and come up here to the upstairs one. There are some chests in here. They're not really filled with anything too good. There's a little bit of clothing in here, but really the good stuff's downstairs. So let's go downstairs. There's also a, a chest right here on the back wall that's got 200 groschen. So that's where the money is. The good equipment is downstairs though. And it's this room all the way in the back. So if you come in through the bottom, you're going to make a right immediately. And it's going to be this first door. It's an easy lock pick. And even better, if you're still new and you don't have a whole lot of lockpicking skill, this one's easy to get into. It's a very easy lock. You're going to see a ton of gear here, primarily geared towards any kind of bow and arrow gameplay. So you're going to start with bows all the way from two strength and one agility, all the way up to 10 and 15. Really, really good gear. Anything you're doing bow, you should be coming here first. There's also a skill book, The Joy of Gutting 2, and a treasure map, number 17. And then all the arrows that you'll need for quite a while. And there are a few other chests. Like I said, most of them aren't really worth looking at. So we're going to keep moving on to the next. So we're going to exit this guy's house and we're going to go down to the blacksmith. It's this property. So we're going to skip the one in the middle. These people are poor. They've got nothing to steal. The one right next to it is the blacksmith. If you come in from the downstairs, you're going to go right to their storage unit, which is past the first room, past the stairwell, and it's the room right in the back. It's a very easy lock to get in at least. Forgot my torch, I had to go kill somebody and grab his. So we come in here, it is a very hard lock, but this is where he's got all the goodies. So you see the military horseshoe, noble horseshoe. There's some other stuff that's lower tier. There's sharp as a knife, that's a skill book for maintenance. And then you've got some repair kits. And then of course, some more arrows if you need them. And if we go upstairs, there's a few chests up here as well. And in here, you can see there's a hard chest and a very hard chest. The very hard doesn't really have a whole lot. There's a couple pieces of clothing in it. And same thing with the hard chest. There's some plain dress in here worth a little bit of money. But really, most of your loot's going to be done with the one we already checked. Next, we're going to leave the blacksmith and go further to the northernmost castle. Now, this place, I don't really like to loot here. It's very dangerous. There's not really anything that valuable here. Personally, I would pass this unless you're trying to level up your lockpicking and you have high stealth. Otherwise, I would skip it. It's very, very difficult to get in and out without being seen. I mean, there's a little bit of clothing here in the second floor. There's some quest items up here that you'll need to get eventually. But in terms of actual loot that you can sell, there's really not that much. Even in the nobles quarters, you can see this very hard chest has absolutely nothing in it. And then there's a little bit of clothing over here. The only real place you're going to find decent loot is if when you first come upstairs, if you look over here where the main gate is. So right when you come in the gate, you can go into the second floor up here. This actually has one chest at the very top that's halfway decent. So you're going to go in here. This is a restricted area and there are guards that like to sleep here. So you have to be careful, but we're going to go upstairs. So up the second ladder. And then this one's got the duelist, the piercer and the merchant sword. So not terrible, the, especially the duelist. I do actually like the sword quite a bit. And as I said, you can find more chests down here, especially in the downstairs. There's always people sleeping here. They wake up pretty easily and they'll spot you. There's really not much worth taking in here. 
So after we finish looting this, or if you skip it, you're going to want to go to the other side of the top of the hill. So in this case, we're going to go out towards the training area where Bernard usually is. We're going to loop back around and we're going to come right here to the tavern. When you first enter, it's the door on the left. There are chests in the one on the right, but again, not worth your time. I would stick to the one over here on the left. It's an easy lock to get in. You're going to make a right. And then on your left hand side, there's going to be a very hard chest here. This one has 150 groschen and then a bunch of the usual stuff. It does have a book in here as well, Tavern Life. So it's a skill book for drinking. You got all the alcohol, food, any of that stuff if you need it. We're going to go back down the hill for one last property. This is number 25. I recommend going in from the downstairs side door, not the front door. So it's an easy lock. And then right when you come in, you're going to make an immediate left. Another easy lock, and then you'll see a couple hard chests. Very hard, and then very hard in the back. The one in the back is the one that has the money in it. 100 groschen, marigold detoxion, there's some, you know, the usual stuff, save your schnapps, a bunch of repair kits, and then just little odds and ends if you need. This front one doesn't have money, but it has very similar items. It's got food. It does have Hercules in his diet, so if you need the book, you can get that. Some more potions, and then the usual stuff that the other one had as well. Right, let's backtrack a little. I'm an idiot and I totally forgot to hit three or four different things. So we're going to catch up on those right now. So once you leave the apothecary, instead of going straight up the hill, we're actually going to go back here behind the church. And once you're at the outside edge of the wall, you'll see this pretty thick, looks like a little barracks. We're going to head in there. This is guarded by a hard lock. And once you're inside, there's a couple places you can go upstairs. There's three levels. There's weapons all over the walls, ash hunting bow. There's all kinds of bows. The nice ones, the U hunting bow, that's one of the more expensive ones. There's the halberds and the scythe, some two-handed weapons. I think most of this other stuff is not that great. The stalwart is quite expensive though. And then they do have arrows if you need that. Let's go upstairs. There are some sleeping spots here, so you have to be careful if they are sleeping. They're very easy to wake if you start picking stuff or if you walk too close to them. This one's very hard, and this one has a light brigandine. It's probably the only thing worth taking in here. Half decent armor, and then we'll go up one more floor. This one has two chests, an easy one with a curios, and another easy one with riveted pauldrons. The short light brigandine is half decent. It's not quite 500, so I, I don't know if I include it in the database or not, but that is up here as well. Let's head back down and we got to go to the butcher shop, which isn't too far from where we left off last time as well. So if you're looking at the church from where we came in, that little archway, it's going to be the very first property that you see looking to your right. Now, I do recommend going in like usual, either the downstairs or the upstairs uh, on the side. So I don't really like going in through the front door. So we're going to go in from the downstairs. There's a hard lock here right near the stairway. There's two places. There's one right here, the very hard. This has the Groschen, so this has 200 Groschen in it. It's like a little, it's not a normal looking chest. I think this is the only one in the game that I know of. Well, actually, there might be one in Sasa that looks like that, but very small, pretty easy to miss. And then there's the big tall cupboard. This one has all the meat if you need any kind of food. There are some chests upstairs. They're not really anything good in there. I wouldn't waste your time. So after you loot the pub up here, the building on the left-hand side, instead of going all the way back down the hill, you're going to want to hit up this next one, the cobbler. Now, this is another one of those ones where you kind of have to be careful because there's going to be two or three people in there almost all the time. So once you go into the cobbler, you're going to want to go check this room in the back. There's two chests in here. Very hard right by the front door. This has 200 groschen and then some pretty nice shoes. So you got 1100, 900, 600, 500. So again, a lot of good shoes here. The chest along the back wall is very hard, but doesn't really have anything in it. The main chest in the room also doesn't have anything in it. So that's pretty much it. These two chests are where everything is. And like I said, you probably want to go at nighttime. Otherwise, these people are just going to be camping this the whole time. Now, after we leave the cobbler, there's another tavern just down the road. We're going to head in here. We're going to make an immediate left and go up to the second floor here. There's a couple chests in here in the sleeping area. Not anything worth taking. Same thing in here. There's another chest in there with, I think it was 30 something groschen. You're going to want to go in and then go downstairs. You can't access the downstairs from the outside. So you have to do it from the top floor and come down. And then immediately on your left, you're going to see a room here with a very hard chest and a hard chest. The very hard chest has 150 groschen in it. This hard chest has another 42 in it, so close to 200 groschen here. Then we're going to want to go back outside. There's nothing else in here. Next, we're going to come out of this building and go just across the way. And then same thing, go upstairs. There's a very hard chest along that back wall. It has a little bit of money in it, 27 groschen, an expensive dress, so almost 500 on that. There's a very easy cabinet on the other wall. This one also has some decent clothing in it. So nobles, green hose, and then some silent shoes. Then we're going to go through the door and there's another chest over here on the left. It's got a little bit of money in it. Another just about 50 groschen. So decent money here. That's all they've got here. There's a few chests downstairs, but they don't have anything of value in it. 
And that's pretty much it. I'm going to cut this off because I've killed so many guards here. I'm getting less than 20 frames. My CPU is about to catch fire. Well, let's go into the recap. Ratai is an amazing city for everything. There's 230 locks, over 100 of which are hard and very hard difficulty. There's over 8,000 in raw Russian to steal and literally hundreds of thousands worth of weapons and armor. You can't go wrong as a thief in Ratai, and hopefully this database helps you pick which spots to focus on. In the next video, I'll be covering all of Sasau and should have the video edited within a week. We're planning on covering KCD2 just like this early next year, so keep us in mind. We're also completely reworking our YouTube members and Patreon perks soon, so if you want to get ad-free early access to all of our videos and many, many more perks, consider joining. A huge shout out to our current supporters, we really appreciate you so much. So once you leave Perkstein Castle, you're going to want to come... Hey, you! Don't move! Avada Kedavra!